tired of doing your budgeting and forecasting manually? Say no more. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at how you can use planning analytics, auto AI, and Python to automate your budgeting and forecasting. Let's get to it. So what are we covering? Well, first up, we're gonna take a look at how we can extract data from planning analytics and use it to train an auto AI model. We're then going to deploy that model and use it to make predictions. And last but not least, we're gonna tie it all together and we're going to use TM1Py to automatically take data out of planning analytics, run predictions, and then push it back into our TM1 cubes. Now, whilst what we're doing today may be a really specific application, the process in and of itself can be used in a whole wide range of applications. You can use it for sales projections, expense forecasting, and even balance sheet planning. The opportunities are really quite endless. So how are we actually gonna do this? Well, first up, we're going to extract data from TM1. We're then going to take that data inside of a CSV and upload it into Watson Studio. From there, we'll train a machine learning model using Auto AI, and then once that model's trained, we'll deploy it using Watson Machine Learning. Once that's all done, we'll be able to run predictions using TM1Py to extract data out of planning analytics and TM1Py to push it back in. Ready to get into it? Let's do it. Alrighty, so we're gonna start out inside of our planning analytics workspace dashboard. So you can see here, we've got a bunch of information to do with our expenses. So over on the left-hand side, we've got a high-level expenses review cross tab. Then we've got a few visualizations, so expenses by quarter and cost of goods by product. Now, say we were to do some pretty basic expense modeling, what we might choose to do is unhide some rows within our cross tab. And we can see here that our first quarter expenses were around about $1.8, $1.9 million. Now, if we wanted to, at a really high level, we could just spread that same number against the first quarter. So I could type in 1.9. And instantaneously, I've now updated my budget, but you can see it might not be the best reflection of what's actually going to happen across that product range and across that period. So you can see down here that our products are probably, or each have their own individual pattern of expenditure. So in this case, product 2511675 tends to trend a little bit above $200,000 and then starts a spike. But because we've just spread our budget, it's pretty much flatlined. So it's not the best representation of what we actually expect to spend. So we can solve this using auto AI and using machine learning. So how are we actually gonna do this? So first up, let's actually take a look at some views that we've got pre-prepared. So in this case, whenever we're performing a machine learning task, you've got two key tasks. You've got the ability or the need to train your machine learning model and then perform scoring. So in this case, we're going to pass our machine learning model all of our data for the stores that we wanna predict and for the products that we wanna predict for 2018. And then we're going to take data from those same stores and from those same products but predict over FY 2019. So we're gonna take our existing data to train it, and then we're going to predict forward on new data. So you can see here that we've got some information in here, and this is all to do with that spreading that we just did. If we wanted to inside of planning analytics, we can really quickly spread that and get rid of it. So in this case, I'm just spreading zero across all the cells. And if we step back into our baseline budget, you can see that that's now gone back to zero. That's fine, we're gonna solve all that when we perform or when we start building our machine learning model. Now, in order to build our machine learning model, we're going to be working largely inside of Watson Studio. So let's go on ahead and skip through and actually create a project and set up the things that we need to do to do this. Okay, so we've set up our project. Now there's two things that we need to attach to this project so that we can start working with our auto AI service, but also so we can work with our file system a little bit easier inside of Watson Studio. So first we need to associate a project token, and then second we need to associate a Watson machine learning service so that we can use auto AI to build our machine learning model. So let's do that. So here I'm going to create an access token and I'm going to give it the role of editor so that way it has control over the entire project. And then we're going to associate our Watson machine learning service. If I just scroll down, select Watson, and then choose my machine learning service. And I've already got one created, so I don't need to create a new one. But if you wanted to, you could just create new, hit light, more than enough to, to play around and test out this tutorial. So let's hit machine learning ZE and hit save. Okay, perfect. So we've now got an access token and we've also got our machine learning service. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a Jupyter Notebook to actually hook into our planning analytics instance and pull out that training data that we were taking a look at before. Oh, 
Awesome, so our Jupyter Notebook has spun up. So there's four key things that we need to do inside of our training notebook. We need to set up our credentials. We need to connect TM1 and extract some data. We need to pre-process that data and actually give it a little bit of data richness. And then last but not least, we're gonna export that data set as a CSV so that we can then import it into Auto AI. So let's lay out a bit of a scaffold and then we'll start filling it up. Okay, so that's our scaffold laid out. Now what we're going to do is load in our credentials for our project. So in this case, we're gonna grab our project access token and our planning analytics credentials. So there's four key things that we need for our TM1 credential. These are our address. So in this case, our admin host and where our planning analytics instance is actually hosted our HTTP port, which can be found inside of our configuration, whether or not we're using SSL, and last but not least, our username and password. So we're going to have our address. All right, perfect. So that's our TM1 credential set up. So now what we're going to do is connect to planning analytics and extract our data. So in this case, when we're going to be connecting to planning analytics, we're going to be using a Python package called tm one Pi. This is going to allow us to integrate with our planning analytics server using Python. So the first thing that we need to do is actually install the tm one Pi package within our notebook. So we can do that using the Python command pip install tm one Pi. And then what we're going to do is we're actually gonna extract data out of views we've already created inside of a cube within planning analytics. The cube name is OpSales and the view that we're going to be extracting data out of is called training view. Perfect, so we've successfully imported our data from TM1. Now you can't see anything on the screen because we haven't printed it out. So we can take a look at the data set that we've just imported using the df.head command. And you can see we've got all of the measures and all of the data from the view that we set up called training view. Now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to perform some data transformations. So at the moment, what you can see is that our time and date is really just showing up as a string. So that's not all that useful for the purposes of machine learning. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert that into a timestamp and then we're gonna extract some additional date features. We're also going to perform some feature transformation on our product column. So we're just gonna append prod to the start of that so that it treats it as a object rather than just a simple number. We're also gonna drop a few of the columns that we don't need. So we're gonna drop version, account, op sales source, and op sales measure, because we don't need those. So let's start out with the date pre-processing. Okay, perfect. So we've just done our date transformation. So we've converted our date column or originally our time date column to something which can actually be read in by the pandas 
to date time function. We've also created these additional features. So day, day of week, day of year, month, quarter end, month end, and year. So these are gonna add some additional feature richness to when we start the machine learning process. Now we've got two last things to do. So we're just going to append prod to our product column and we're also going to drop the columns that we don't need. So let's do that. Okay, perfect, that's all looking good. So we've appended prod to our product column, stores fine, uh, we've still got our values column, so that's gonna be the column that we're aiming to predict. Those are the values from our TM1 cube. We've got all of our date features, so that's looking all good. Now, the last and final step that we need to perform is we need to export our data inside of, into Watson Studio so that we can start importing it into Auto AI. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can do that using the project function and we're just going to call save data. So when we run this command here, so project save data, and then we export our CSV, what's going to happen is we're going to have a new CSV within our Watson Studio project called training data.csv. We can then take that particular CSV and pass it to Auto AI to start building our machine learning pipelines. So let's go ahead and do that. So we also need to run the cell that, that created our access token. So let's just run that. Then we can run this cell here. Perfect, so our training data is now inside of our project. So if we open up our project, we should now be able to see our CSV in there. And you can see we've got training data.csv in there. So we've now grabbed our data out of our TM1 cube, we've done some pre-processing and we've exported it into our Watson Studio project ready for machine learning. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start up an auto AI experiment and actually start building our machine learning pipelines. So let's do that. So I've just hit add to experiment or add to project and I've chosen auto AI experiment. I'm just gonna name this PA forecast and hit create. And now that I'm inside of my auto AI experiment, I just need to choose the data set that I want to train my machine learning model on and choose the column that I want to predict. So in this case, we've already got our training data.csv inside of our project, so we can choose select from project, choose that CSV and hit select asset. And then all we need to do is select the column that we wanna predict. So in this case, it's called values. And you can see the correct type of prediction type or prediction task has been selected, as well as our optimization metric. Then all we need to do is hit run experiment and our machine learning pipeline is going to start building. So you can see our machine learning pipeline has started building. If we swap our view, we can see that it's going to read in our data set, split it, train it, do some pre-processing, and then start building a bunch of machine learning pipelines. So what's going to happen is eventually you'll get eight machine learning pipelines, and then we'll just deploy the best one and then start building some predictions using planning analytics data. So let's give that some time to train, and then we'll be right back. Five minutes later. And we're back. So now all of our machine learning pipelines have finished training. So we can see we've got not one, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight machine learning pipelines. And it looks like pipeline number three is performing best. Hence, it's got the little star there. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to go and deploy that machine learning model. So we can do that by just scrolling down, choosing our model, and then hitting save as and model. Hit save. then we can step into that same model, choose deployments, add deployment, and we're just going to call it PA forecasting with auto AI and hit save. Now, as soon as this machine learning model has finished deploying, our status will turn from initializing to ready. So once that's done, we can start building our scoring notebook. Awesome, so our machine learning model has now finished deploying and you can see that status is ready. So what we're going to do is step into that deployment. And if we scroll over to implementation and choose Python, 
we've got some boilerplate code there that we can start using to start hooking in our planning analytics instance into our Watson machine learning service. So effectively, this code is going to serve as our boilerplate Python code to generate a prediction, and then we're gonna push it back into PA. So let's copy this for now, and we'll put it into our new notebook. Now, what we're going to do is create a new notebook, and this notebook is going to be used for our scoring. So if you remember, or if cast your mind back, we had two key steps. We had our training process, which we've just finished, and we've also got our scoring process, which is where we start to generate predictions. So in this case, we're going to generate a new notebook that allows us to perform some scoring. So to do that, we're just going to go to Add to Project and choose Notebook. We're just going to name our notebook, Scoring Notebook and then hit create. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is just paste in our boilerplate code. That way we can reuse it later on. So we're gonna probably reformat it a little bit, but it's good to just have it there so we can grab it later on when we do need it. So let's just paste that in. All right, now, as we did in our training process, we're going to lay out a bit of a scaffold for our Python code to allow us to sort of better visualize the steps that we're going to go through to go through this process. So the first thing that we're going to do is again, we're going to set up our TM1 credentials. credentials. Then the second thing that we're going to do is import our data from planning analytics. So if you cast your mind back, we had our initial view over here, in this case, which was our training view, but we also had our scoring view. So our scoring view sort of serves as a bit of a template for where we want to put our data into TM1. So in this case, we're going to import our scoring view as a template, and then we're going to fill those values and then push it back into the queue. So we're going to extract. Now, we, because we performed some data pre-processing on our data set when we performed our training, we're going to need to perform that same data processing when we perform a scoring process. So we're going to eventually just copy our code from our previous notebook and paste that in here. But again, we still need to perform that data pre-processing. So let's add in a cell for that. Then last two steps. So we need to perform some predictions, also known as scoring. And last but not least, we are going to push our data back into planning analytics. Alrighty, cool. So the first thing that we want to do is set up our credentials for planning analytics. In this case, they're going to be exactly the same as our training notebook. So we can just copy those in. And we're just going to copy TM1 credentials into our scoring notebook. Now, the next thing that we need to do is set up our Watson machine learning credentials. So we need to get a couple of things for from Watson machine learning. Specifically, we need to get our API key, our instance ID and our URL. So let's create a template for that. Now, to get all these credentials, we can just hit our burger menu, choose Watson services, and open a link in the new tab. And then what we're going to do is go down to our machine learning service that we had. So in this case, it's machine learning-ze. And if we select service credentials and open this up, all the credentials that we need to build this machine learning pipeline are in here. So in this case, we're just going to copy our API key, or we can just copy all of this. And in this case, we're going to paste our API key into our credentials dictionary. And we're going to grab our instance ID from down here. And last but not least, our URL. And we can delete that. All right, cool. So that's all of our credentials set up. That's the boring bit done. Now what we're going to do is again, we're going to extract some scoring data from planning analytics. So I'm all for reusing code where you can. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the code that we used over inside of our training notebook, and we're gonna bring that in as well. So first up, we wanna replicate the imports that we use. So we're just going to copy our TM1Py imports. And we're also going to copy this cell over here, which contain the data to extract data from our cube and pre-process it into a pandas data frame. Now, the only change that we need to make here is rather than pulling our data from our training view, we want to pull data from our predict view. So this is a view that we've already gone and set up inside of planning analytics. It's that second one on the right that we had inside of our workspace dashboard. So we're just going to run that cell. Oh, we're going to run our imports first, then run that cell. And if we take a look using df.head, 
you can see we've extracted some data from our cube and we've got our values showing as none because inside of our cube we, did, we had all of those values set to zero so in this case they're going to be showing up as none cool so that's all working perfectly well now what we're going to do is perform the same data pre-processing that we did on our original data frame on this data frame. To save us some time, we're just going to copy in that same code so we can bring that in. And we're also going to bring in our date transformations and our product transformations. And last but not least, the columns that we want to drop. Now, there's a few minor changes that we want to make here. So ideally, what we want to do is put all of our date transformations into a new date column. So that is going to allow us to retain our existing date column so that when it comes to pushing our data back into planning analytics, we don't need to do additional data work to create a new column for uh, pushing that data in. So in order to do that, we're just going to push our date changes into a new column called date. So in this case, we just need to remove time from all of these. Now, if we take a look at our data frame, you can see that we've retained our time date column. So that's going to allow us to use that later on, but we've still performed our data pre-processing over here. So that's gonna help us later on when we wanna perform our actual scoring. Now, we're still going to perform our product update. And the only change that we're going to perform here is that we're going to also store our pre-processed data frame inside of a new temporary data frame called analytical base table or ABT for short. That's just gonna mean that we retain our existing sort of data structure and that any final changes that we make to our scoring data set are going to be only temporary and in that data frame. So let's create a new one called ABT and we're going to remove in place equals true. And we're also going to drop our date column because that was a new column that we created as well. And it was not within our scoring model. So now if we take a look at our analytical base table, this should pretty much mimic the same structure that we had when we went and built our machine learning model for scoring. So we've got product, store, values, day, day of week, day of year, month, quarter end, month end, and year. Now what we can also do is drop our values column. So we're not actually going to need that when we perform our scoring. Perfect, so that's all good now. Now, what we wanna do is actually send this for scoring to our machine learning endpoint. So to do that, we're just going to perform one last data transformation. We're going to convert all of our data within our data frame to a set of values inside of an array. So we can do that by creating a new variable called scoring. And in this case, we're going to convert our data frame up here to values and then to a list. So if we take a look now, We've just got a array or a number of arrays within a single array. So our, this is the way that Watson Machine Learning expects the data to be sent through. Uh, and it's just gonna make our lives a whole lot easier when we go to actually score. So that brings us to step four. So scoring some data. So let's go on ahead and do that. So we need to import a few things, uh, namely to make sure that we authenticate against the Watson Machine Learning service, and then we can actually perform some scoring. So let's do that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is set up a connection to the Watson Machine Learning API client. This is going to help us get a IAM token to help us authenticate when we make our scoring requests. So in this case, we can connect to the client and then create an IAM token by calling client.wml token. Now that should generate a token, so that's pretty much the majority of our authentication done. Now what we can do is get onto scoring. So in this case, we're going to take our code that we generated and bring it over here. Now, what we're going to do is really just fill in the blanks. So there's a number of things that we need to fill in within this particular set of code in order for us to generate a scoring request first. 
So what we need to do is we've already got our IAM token. Now what we need is our ML instance ID. So let's create a variable for that. And we can actually access this from our credentials. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to replace this array over here with our scoring data. And we can strip out those last two pieces of code and that should be about it. Perfect, so we've actually just gone and run a scoring request. Kind of lackluster, right? But if we actually take a look at the values, you can see we've generated a number of predictions. Now, in this format, it's probably not gonna help us all that much when it comes to pre-processing that and pushing it back into PA. But what we can do is actually just access the JSON property and this makes it much nicer to work with. So we're gonna store that within a variable called predictions. So first what we're going to do is we're going to take these predictions and then append them back to our original data frame. So we can do that by just calling df predictions. So that creates a new column within our data frame. And then what we're going to do is use a Python function called a list comprehension or a Python method called a list comprehension. And this is going to allow us to loop through all of our values within our predictions and convert it into a format that works with our pandas data frame. So let's do that. So now if we take a look at our original data frame, we should have a new column called predictions. And you can see we've got our predicted values appended there. Now what we want to do is create a cell set to push our data back into planning analytics. So planning analytics works or team one pi works with this concept of cell set. So a cell set is basically a key which consists of each one of your elements within the dimensions that you want to pass it through to. And basically what it does is it passes the value at the end to the intersection of all those elements. So let's go on ahead and create that cell set and then eventually let's push it back into team one using team one pi. Now we're going to push all of this data back into a version called auto AI forecast. That's going to allow us to distinguish where those forecasts actually come from. Perfect, so we've now created our cell set. And if you take a look at a single value, you can see that we've got a key here, which follows the same order as the dimensions within our cube. So we've got our time date, our version, our account, our product, our store, our source, and then last but not least, our measure. And then we've got the value that we wanna pass through to that intersection of elements. Now what we're going to do, the last thing that we need to do is just push it back into planning analytics. So we can do, again, do that using TM1Py. So let's strip out that line or that boilerplate code that we had originally, and let's push it back. So what we can do is just grab our TM1 service line there. And then all we need to do to push in our data back to our cube is specify TM1. So for that, we're going to use the write values method. And then to that, we're going to pass the cube that we want to pass our data into, the data or the cell set itself, and then the order of our dimensions. So this helps later on if the order of your dimensions changes or if you've got a sandbox. Okay, so you can see that the line of code that we've written is basically using the right values method. We've passed through the cube that we want to send our data to, the cell set, and then the order of our dimensions that are within our cube. So if we run this cell, our data will now be sent back into our TM1 cube. So if we go back to our dashboard and refresh our view, you can now see that we've generated an automated forecast. Now, if we clear this value and run that cell again, Again, we can see our data is automatically pushed into our cube. And that about wraps up how to generate an automated forecast. Now there's a few other things that you can do following this. If you wanted, you could take that Python notebook that we created and strip out a lot of the comments and a lot of the visualizations and convert it into a raw Python script so that you could orchestrate it using turbo integrated processes. Really the opportunities are endless. 
Also inside of Watson Studio, you can also orchestrate this if you wanted to create a job and run this type of forecast automatically. And that about wraps up today's tutorial. Let's take a quick recap of what we did. So we extracted data from our TM1 cubes and generated a machine learning model using Auto AI. We then deployed our model using Watson Machine Learning to make predictions. And then last but not least, we used TM1Py and Python to tie it all together. So we extracted data, generated predictions, and then pushed it back into our cubes, all using TM1Py. That helping us complete the entire cycle. And that about wraps up today's tutorial. Thanks for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found today's video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you've got any questions at all, be sure to drop a comment in the comments below and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.